do now today is we're going to change the steering wheel buttons. Nothing wrong with them, so I'll keep them as a spur test device because they often get limbo fault. And what we're going to do is we're going to change, they come in a pair, you see. So basically, the way these uh, systems work is that's the right hand side and that's the left hand side. I'm actually on front camera, so everything will be upside down probably. But basically, this side is the master and this side is the slave. And what happens on these a lot of the time is the wiring here in between the master and the slave breaks or there's some issue and actually they're not can signals all they are is binary signals on off on off one note one note and that's it and then the master interprets for example the cruise control speed the set the resume up and down all that type of business from here to here down this cable then this goes on a limbo so through the spiral cable SZL, and then that goes on to where it needs to go to which in this case i think would be um, probably the fem module if uh, memory serves me correctly. So you've got basically a unit with binary input down this wire, do it with my head, down that wire. Then you've got the output on a LIN signal, what this receives and processes the binary turns into a LIN signal through the SZL, though you could have problems too. And then down on CAN bus um, to the to the footwell module, to the FEM, the FEM module, front electric module. So what we're going to do today, we're going to change it because basically I'll show you in a minute the button here has completely wore off. So that's what we're going to do today and I'll show you how to do it. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to show you a tip how to do this. There's a BMW way, which is absolutely ridiculous garbage. And then there's the easier way. The first thing we need to do, of course, is we need to set the old shroud off. Don't be shy with this one, there's no screws. Screwdriver in like that, just do that. Literally, it might look brutal, but actually it's better than prying. There's no maps at all. Often it falls off, but don't worry about that. Bottom one, there's little pinch shibulas in here. You can just undo them like that. Now you have to be careful here because you've got the transponder for around the key. So we need to be a little bit careful. Put the old light on, I think, so everyone can see. So what I normally do with these, and be careful it. Just pull the plug out. And try and use a screwdriver you'll damage the wires it's very very tight not with the screwdriver you'll get it and all you need to do then really is undo one trim clip at the back with your trim clip removal tool not so easy without the pov glasses and then that's off and then basically you've got access to the steering wheel now what you're supposed to do with bmw is these holes at the back you're supposed to put a torx 30 screwdriver and you're supposed to mess around like this Try and get a view of that. Um, so what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to get a torque screwdriver and you're supposed to go in here like this. I found over the years a much better solution, which I'm going to show you right now, and it works 100% every time. When you do this, you can damage the steering wheel, and it's still difficult. It's very difficult. You've got to get in and push and lever, and then one side comes off, one side doesn't. So I'm going to show you a foolproof secret technique. This is the way I do it. So, if you take out the steering wheel controls first. Now, some of these BMWs, there's a gap at the back, you can get a screwdriver in there and not use them stupid holes. On these, I just find them so difficult, it's easier just to take the screws out and then pull the front of the uh, steering wheel controls out without damaging the steering wheel. And that way you can see what you're doing then. So if you kind of do it like this, you use a little screwdriver, obviously don't press on there, you'll damage it. You can just tease it out. And the beauty of doing it, it's a bit of a ratty steering wheel anyway. You can use plastic as well, of course. You don't want to be prying like that. What we'll do now, we'll switch over to a plastic implement. Or we'll use our fingers. Fingers are always best if you can use fingers. But there is some little, how can I say, locating pegs on here, which they can break. So you have to be really, really careful with that. Just sit that up there temporarily and then get our screwdriver in there now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the old screwdriver in and it goes in at an angle and the angle is almost perpendicular to the steering wheel. And you just push it like that and you can just see the steering wheel is moving and it just releases like that. We'll do the same again with our wonderful screwdriver. This side. Yeah. 
An assistant usually helps, but everyone's busy today. <sighs> Old school tip, but BMWs it's not necessary. Leave the bolt in and then pull it off so you don't bang yourself in the face. That's loose now. There is a master spline on these, by the way. And you can't go wrong, but still, put a little screwdriver mark on. You never know if some clowns had the steering wheel off. There's no real need, because there is a master spline, but whatever. But you see, there's a master spline there. You can't really kind of go wrong. But people sometimes break and damage them, and, you know, de determined idiots can damage things, right? So now that's pretty much ready for off. There you can see the spring assembly. I'll try and give you a demonstration of that. I'll just to put my camera down. A moment. So what you're doing is when you're trying to undo the airbag, you're getting it in at that angle and you're pushing it. You're pushing that to release the airbag. That's all you're doing. And the angle is critical, obviously, because you've got to get on that tab. It's not, I mean, it's a stupid design. If they'd have made a tunnel, a tube there, well, you couldn't go wrong. If you put a bloody tube there now, you'd get it every time. But instead, you, you know, you'd risk damaging the airbag, damaging wires. It's a right stupid system. So that's the mechanism anyway. And that's how it works, just in case you wondered. So the torque at I think is 62 Newtons after, and we have to clean the locks out off the, off the splines. Next job now, we'll get it on the bench, we'll swap everything round. And so what you're happy. doing is when you're trying to undo the airbag, you're getting it in at that angle and you're pushing it. You're pushing that to release the airbag, that's all you're doing. And the angle is critical, obviously, because you've got to get on that tab. It's not, I mean, it's a stupid design. If they'd have made a tunnel, a tube there, well, you couldn't go wrong. If you put a bloody tube there now, you'd get it every time. But instead, you, you know, you'd risk damaging the airbag, damaging wires. It's a right stupid system. So that's the mechanism anyway. And that's how it works, just in case you wondered. So the torque at I think is 62 Newtons after and we have to clean the locks out off the off the splines. Next job now, we'll get it on the bench, we'll swap everything round and everyone's happy. The thing about BMW steering wheels is on the spiral cable, which is the clock or the clock spring, however you want to call it. On the on the old one, when this was new, this would have had a tab to lock it. But however, it's not a problem because as you can see it won't turn. But just bear in mind that this is what makes it turn. So don't touch that. If you lose position, you're in trouble. So it's a good design in that it has this tab, what like locks it when the steering wheel's on. Until the steering wheel's back in place, that can't go anywhere. So don't worry about it. Just don't move your spiral, spiral cable, okay, because if you move it, it'll snap the clock spring at full turn. If you have it 180 or 90 out, there's no give on these, they'll just break. Common fault on BMWs, incidentally, usually is um, the problem with the Lin bus goes through this connector here, and then the spiral cable has a break on the Lin side. And then that's when you get all these problems with airbag lights coming on because the airbag goes through here, the airbag goes through there, Lynn goes through there. So basically, the spiral can fail, and that's where you can get warning lights for airbags. It's not always the airbag or the wiring, sometimes it can be the pins as well. So that's just one thing to bear in mind.
Put your steering wheel back on time. New, brand new bolt, and what we like to do, it's only man, it's not mandatory, but I call it liquid insurance. I just like to put a couple of lines of Loctite. This is very only medium strength. Don't use high strength, you'll never get it off. And it's just a bit of liquid insurance. So we line it up with our master spline. Like so. You can plug that in now if you like. Just check we're on the master spline. Yes, we're right in the middle. That's great. We'll run our bolt up. I will need an assistant for this because it's going to be 62 newtons, as I said. That's looking pretty good. And I'm going to shout the assistant in Finnish because I have to speak Finnish at work, you see. Aku, voitko pidä ahjauspyörä? Kiitos. Tänne päin. Kiitos. No niin. Valmis? Taas. No niin, kiitos. battery is still disconnected of course double check give it a tug everything's okay nothing's in the way there we can now massage our airbag in place and it's massage and then a push and it's on give it a tug it's looking good and all we need to do now is put our steering shroud on and of course the first thing we need to do is plug in our uh, steering wheel, steering key, uh, transponder ring, the keyless access, plug in our wiring harness, which was that, and then lift it on, this is the easiest sort of steering shroud you'll ever do, it's not like a Ford Cortina in the 1970s, nightmare, brittle plastic, this is real good stuff. You just line it up, give it a bit of a fiddle, got some nice locating pegs. But you'll work that out yourselves. I don't think I need to make a video about that. I'm just going to line it up and then bang it on like that. And then the top one is even easier. You can lock that off now. A couple of locating pegs for the leather or pleather. And just clip them in first. Or later, actually, that'd be better. Massage it, bang it, done. Pop your leather in, leather, whatever you want to call it. This is damaged because this car is not in great condition. And that's it. All we'll do now is we'll put the battery back on and then we'll check the operation. Done. Put our battery back on now, as it's an airbag circuit, always we disconnect the battery. Straight on. 